Well, a very good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Tonight we speak to Professor Julius B. Talk. He is the Immigration and Citizen Services uh, PS at the back of the just launched digital identification pilot phase. I will be asking him about of course, the status of your passport application. Now the president's statement on the use of biometrics for the new identity card and of course the proposed registration of the newborns. How different is this project from the previous ones? Please join the conversation online at KTN News KE. The hashtag, as always, is News Hour, and Marisha Witte is with us on sign language tonight. Let's get the show on the road. And we begin with the top story tonight. And tonight, a debate is raging on whether King Charles III offered an apology to Kenyans over the abuse during the British colonial rule colonial rule. Now the king was explicit with his words, saying that there were no excuses for the abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans during the struggle for independence from Britain. Katyn's political affairs reporter, Daniel Karuki, interrogates that important part of the king's speech yesterday. Kenya, and indeed the world, was keen on King Charles III's speech during his first visit as the English monarch to a Commonwealth country. Kenyans were eager for an apology in regards to abuses during the British colonial rule. The wrongdoings of the past are a cause of the greatest sorrow and the deepest regret. There were abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans as they waged, as you said at the United Nations, a painful struggle for independence and sovereignty. The king was well apprised. He used the state banquet hosted by President William Ruto on Tuesday night to speak on the sensitive issue. There can be no excuse. In coming back to Kenya, it matters greatly to me that I should deepen my own understanding of these wrongs, and that I meet some of those whose lives and communities were so grievously affected. We cannot live as prisoners of the past, neither can we go far into the future if we turn our backs on history and historical actions and omissions whose legacies encumber our present. His speech seemed to steer clear of any language that might open a broader conversation about reparations. The statement has left Kenyans divided on opinion as to whether the king really apologized to Kenyans. With some saying the king apologized, though indirectly. Others say the king's statement fell short of addressing the comprehensive scope of human rights abuses. I know yesterday you issued an apology in recognizing the atrocities and the problems that our people met at that time. As the Kipsikis community, there has been a distorted history that seems to paint Mau Mau to have been the only fighters for independence. The king's approach, international relations pundits say, could signal how he plans to tackle similar calls to acknowledge and apologize for colonial atrocities. Interestingly, during his first day of the visit, King Charles III met billionaire just what Rai in one of his many engagements in the capital, Nairobi. Daniel Karioki, KTN News, Nairobi. Right, the deepest regret. Moving on, but still on stories related to the visit by.